Oakland, Oakley. Good evening, heroes and heroines, and welcome to practicing program again C, where I would like to address a few little things. Uh, we have a typo in the default, uh, the setting of the, of the defaults. Apparently, I spotted. Um, is that in the config file? Yeah, it's the defaults. So it might not even actually be in here. In fact, it is. So here we go. Chat comments. It should be um, like that instead of. It shouldn't be the plural. I think that is all you need there. So let's tick that off. <laughs> um, it's always nice to start with a bit of success. Now there's also <clears throat> I spotted while indexing the last time at Hero, I had to add a new thing triggering a I had to add a new topic triggering a re re um, triggering this this updating of the trixel, and you can see here we've still got this CSSS right. So if we go to cinema.c, where it's actually right here. <clears throat> so what's going on here, I think, is that this line here it corresponds to this, right? I don't think that this occurs anywhere else. But you can see that the, the line should read updated checksum. So the update is going to be a col colorized color with a reinsertion color. Checksum this, which is the checksum length. Um, checksum of the asset path, right? Updated checksum this of asset path. Now the asset path should end right here, but we're getting um, this bit bit of information here. Where's that coming from? I think that's coming from up there. It's coming from the previous message. So I'd just like to have a quick quick look at this just to see um, what's going on. Um, so if I just rebuild, uh, run this thing, and if I just go in and make a change, still got the thing open. What have we got? Well, I must have swung from the gutters, so gutters. Yeah, so we've still got that there. Perfect. So if I just just if I just do this, what happens? Yeah, right. <clears throat> so it's kind of like it's overwriting some of the stuff. So I, th I think what's happening here is that the clear terminal row function is supposed to be it's supposed to be doing this, right? It's supposed to be emitting backspaces but it just doesn't seem to be doing it correctly, really. <laughs> like, basically when you look at the documentation for this B, this backspace thing don't know that I made a note of it what it says is that it backs up and inserts spaces where you're backed up, but it doesn't seem that that's what it's doing. It all it seems to be doing is <laughs> like moving the cursor backwards. So I think I just need to essentially do this. Do I have a length? I think I could get away with that. Right. And then just do for int i <laughs> is equal to um, length. F printf spelling. 
try try again. F print F. Oh, where is it? Alright, I think do that. And then having done that, write out a new line. And then just try this once more. Um, now I think we've got too many. Do we have too many things there? I mean, clearly you can see that um, we've got rid of that garbage stuff. Do we need to do this also? Let's try it without, because basically we don't need it to produce um, new lines where they don't need to be. Now, you can see what's going on here, it's kind of like saying this, <laughs> it's printing out this, it's put a new line here for some reason, and then it's just stuffed our spaces down there. Uh, I guess what does Clitino Road do? I mean, that all it does is insert the B, doesn't it? What happens if I have the full screen available to me? So that has now left my cursor over here <laughs> oh sorry it shouldn't be that it should be the um, it should be the full length it should be the what is it it's the um, length take with the message length No, it shouldn't be the entire thing. Let's try that one. Yeah. Monica. I guess. We've got the message. We've apparently cleared that terminal row of the message. We've then written out some of the message. Oh, sorry, it's, yeah, just the, the way around, isn't it? There's update to check something's left the cursor over there. Sarah. Well, I guess that's. Yeah, I just don't know.
I mean, maybe just do let it do that. <laughs> Is that true? Or but actually, hang on a second. Is it? Well, it's not sufficient to. It's not sufficient to do a new line because the new line was already sitting over here, wasn't it? If we manage to snipe it in successfully, that we do this. Lincoln. Looks okay to me, I think, doesn't it? Well, hang on a second. I need to rerun it, don't I? Christ. right to me. I've got no complaints about that. Just try it with the thing like that. Right, I think we nailed that one. I guess like, um, yeah, what do you call this kind of area? Um, It's kind of like it's not really clear. It's clear terminal row. Probably worth also making the eye with the UN sixty four to to go with the length. terminal row and then the next thing is to just like mop up spaces <laughs> clear terminal characters Do you want to put the new line on? I guess you don't actually. You need to do that yourself. So. So this isn't really because they I mean this clear terminal characters 
it's sort of talking in terms of you need to tell it how many characters it's you need to tell it the number of characters when you do a clear term of row you sort of want to be able to just say this function and this does the whole row for you but I'm not sure how you necessarily figure that out I guess you'd be sort of trying to pop stuff off standard out wouldn't you or standard error actually you basically be wanting to look into the standard error stream and be saying while there's not a new line clear the row <laughs> I'm not sure if you can do that though uh, and I'm also not sure that I'm particularly interested in going down much more of a deeper rat hole than we've already gone down here glass perfect <clears throat> alright so sync db we were in the situation where we were trying to synchronize the the configuration file or I guess actually we're trying to synchronize the database the hi the uh, project hierarchy that we're stored in the database with the the one that's configured in the configuration file um, not sure if it's worth while well, looking at the actual thing um, it's also not there anymore, was it it's um config center I believe yeah so here's our thing yesterday or on Saturday we did the rudimentary version of this which essentially it correctly takes the project hierarchy in the configuration file and represents it in the database file and then what it can do is on subsequent runs it can actually sort of make sure that it doesn't like add all the guys again basically <laughs> so it like checks that the first project is hero um, that it's that the, the project after that is code and the project after that is ray um, because that's just how we specify that we're going to lay these guys out uh, and then it can correctly check that the next guy is going to be risky and then within that risky risk book and within book we've got a coad and reader it can correctly kind of handle that so you can handle like the insertion of stuff into the database and then the, the sort of tallying up of the already added stuff with the same stuff that it, that it added what it can't do is deal with stuff like adding a new project in here right if I were to do like I don't know well, I mean, it's just like one, right? It's just like title, <laughs> volume one, or something. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you call it, but it can't handle adding a new a new dude. At least I don't think you can. Um, no, it definitely can't. Uh, I mean, it probably can actually. <laughs> it can. It can probably handle adding a new one to the end. Is that true? Well, actually, no, it can't even do that, actually, now that I think about it. Because all it does is <laughs> it goes over the top level project counts <clears throat> and it just says 
if the top level projects match if the top level project ID matches then we just say that we've located it and we just skip it <laughs> right that's all you do so yeah <laughs> if we were to like do what I was just about to kind of suggest which was if you were to do this it would just straight up ignore it what it wouldn't ignore though is the addition of a new project at the end so if we were to for example after the risky project this this top level risky project becomes risky if we were to do something like this um, Right, this we do, isn't it? Yeah. If we were to do this, this would actually correctly be able to add a new dude. Uh, and then it'd probably just continue to work, actually. Um, but what it won't be able to do is kind of adding somebody. That's at at the like the non-final position. It doesn't handle that, and it also doesn't handle. As I say, it doesn't handle. It well, it straight, straight up ignores the addition of stuff like um, this. Oops. Right. So this is a completely conceivable thing that you have to do. Uh, and throughout Hamid Hera's history, we have actually had to do this. Um, Hamid Ray was the most recently added thing, I believe. Um, intro to C and code were... I mean, did we even call it code at the start? I don't even think we called it code at the start. We just had intro to C. Uh, I think we call... I think it was actually called something... Uh, yeah, it did have a name. It's like game architecture or something. Um, it was just in in a directory called that. But then as the thing's gone on, we've introduced the project chat, the Hamid chat, Hamid Ray. I guess Hamid Misk would also have been floating around early on as well, I guess. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that we do need to support. So let me just back that garbage out. Oh yeah, we have a we've done the lineage actually. I think in the nodes it says consider remaining. Yeah. So let's just uh, actually try and do this somehow. Yep. We've totally done that. And also, I was sort of sort of thinking that it's kind of handy that we have done this because. We now have the potential to actually reintroduce a family variable, um, which is actually more meaningful. Basically, what I mean by that is, inside your template, right? We could have a Cinera family variable, um, or what we call it, tags in the in template parlance. We could have like a Cinera family thing, which just sort of says, it's, this is essentially like, it's the, sort of the link structure for the current project and all of its like descendants and all of its family going down. Um, Either we have it like that, or we just sort of say the the family is just the entire thing. Like wherever you are in the structure, you just output it from the top. We could do it like that, um, but at least <clears throat> we have that option now to actually do something that's a bit more sort of uh, semantically relevant, I guess. Uh, yeah. But in terms of this, uh, this stuff here, this thing DB, in order to support some of the stuff that we were just talking about, 
for one thing we can't just we can't just do what this is saying here we can't just sort of say if the top level block ID sorry if the top level project ID matches something then skip that project and, and its children that's not going to cut it you're going to have to have some way of actually going through going past a per, going, going past a project and then descending into its children to see if we've actually got all of its children that is going to have to be something that does have to happen but um, before I do that I don't think I'll I might not do that today uh, we'll see how it goes on um, I mean we haven't really just started haven't we so I suppose yeah <laughs> what, I what I think the next step is because I do want to work through this in, in kind of baby steps just because like when I first tried to do it doing like the full feature thing I just kind of got totally scrambled up and yeah I guess there's just too many balls in the air basically so I'd like to try and go through this a bit in smaller steps I think the next small step that we can do and that I think we I think is necessary is basically it's essentially building up the generations so building up the generation indices and the number of dudes in each generation and do we have I think we've got these guys haven't we push generation yeah push generation free generation um, yeah this is it's exactly this stuff here. Um, so yeah I think what we'd like to do is just try and produce try and make this this whole thing essentially um, it's basically count up the number of entries in a generation as you go basically into some sort of an accumulator now push generation fit I think we want to have a, another function as well so rather than having to check all the time in the actual calling size whether we need to push generation I think we want basically you need to be saying like like is there, is there a number, is there, is there a space available for us to actually kind of start to accumulate this this entry count basically um, So I guess when you come in here, it would be basically like um, increment generation count, in increment generation index count, entry count. I mean, you're always going to be. Well, I suppose actually, maybe you're not actually. When you come to de want to delete stuff, you might want to actually decrement the accumulator. Although now that I think about it, when you delete, you just don't accumulate into it.
Right, so if we accumulate accounts, I think we do need to have. Like, how would you do this otherwise? The current generation. Let's try it. So basically the uh, it's like if the accumulator count is less than or equal to the current generation, then we need to push the generation. That's basically it, isn't it? And then what you do is you say that the accumulator um, entries in generation. Well, actually, it's uh, what is it? I think you're just talking about doing this, isn't it? So, kind of what I'm proposing is pulling out this little bit of information into. function right so it's like you ever don't need to return anything I would just take the accumulator as well. And then you just do oh. Future generation, right? I mean, it's not really doing anything, but it's just accumulating into it, accumulating that number. And then I guess we could have print generations, couldn't we? Uh, 
Um, I guess we do have a lot. We are allowing 64 megabytes worth of. 64 megabits worth of generations. Probably overkill, honestly. Oh, that's why. What isn't this liking? Oh, right, yeah, because we just changed that down to be there. So, let's add an entry generations. And then I guess after we've done this, we just print the generations. Right, I think that sounds reasonable to me. And then frame. Oh yeah, right, I might actually want to just make it exit, might I? Just while we're testing, just so I don't have to keep scanning up. All right, so in generation zero, we have two entries. Perfect. Now, let's see if we can. Somehow. Figure out um, how to do this now. Because basically we need to be able to talk about the presence of uh, entries in, in generations one and two, because there are th three generations. Um, so hero and risky are generation zero. Code Ray Risky Risk and Book are all generation one, and then inside the generation two, we have Coad and Reader. Right, so that's three generations zero indexed. The skip produce and children happens both times. Happens it happens in either case. That happens whether we in it or whether we don't in it in insert essentially. 
So I sort of feel like this might be a reasonable candidate to count up the generations. Yes, this is us. So it's called by this. So let's make it do the do do the do the stuff for us. This guy could reasonably just pass and like sod all. Yeah, I don't think we need to bother. I mean, I guess that's arguable actually. We could maybe sort of. Take it, maybe. Didn't know where we where you're up to actually. Sort of seems like we want to bundle this up, doesn't it? So add entry generation or just use the current generation. So, skip project and children. It calls skip project. I mean, now that I think about it, actually. It's probably that in, uh, function that does this whole thing. Probably, isn't it? I mean, it's going to be this guy that gives us the ideas. It might not end up being the actual person that does it, but... Oh, yeah. Um, that's a good point.
Oh, is that the only thing? We've got added add thingy to generation. We've got print generations. Don't we have free generations somewhere as well? Where's that? Push generation. Oh, they're just, just there. So yeah, I think that we just want to put those guys a bit higher up. Just there. Um, I think that's probably fine. Right, so this person skip approach and thingies. If there's a G, add generation to it, add entry to generation. Right. And then I think it's just like here, isn't it? You just increment the generation count. The current generation. I suppose apps now I think about it. Add entry to generation. Right, we could actually make this guy do that and then you just don't care, like this can just do that. Does that sound fair? like in terms of coming up with a policy for this kind of thing for myself as Casey was talking about in the latest time with Hero actually uh, just to give yourself stuff that you can assume as you're programming because you don't have to kind of like keep having to relearn all this crap all over the all, all over again the question here is who is to do the ifing? Maybe you do it, but maybe the way that you think of it is you go with where it can fail, maybe. Right, so basically, this can you can call this here with no problem, but if you call this here with no passing zero, if you've been past zero, past a null, and you pass that null to this, if this person has received a null, then this fails. So I think I think you just do it at the potential point of failure, don't you? You do the check there. And then everyone else can just do whatever the hell they like, basically. mistaken
all you're supposed to do, I think, is increment the current generation here. Decrement the current generation there. And then each time three just doing that. And that looks reasonable to me. So you've got two generation two entries in generation zero, five in generation one, which is gonna be code ray risky risk and book and then you got the two within books so I think this is just bang on <laughs> now by the way I set my face to the hillside by tortoise is a thing of beauty So I'm not checking if G here, but I think <laughs> there just has to come a point. I, I was saying this the other day, wasn't I? Like in terms of what the other week or month or year or something, there just has to come a point at which you can you can assume that you've been past okay stuff. All right, print landmark, print landmarks. I don't bother to check whether you've been past any of this garbage. I mean, print landmarks is taking the first landmark. I wonder why that doesn't take the asset. And it just does all the stuff itself. You know, just increments past the asset. You know, it check it checks basically if the asset has a landmark count, and then if it does, increment past the asset, and then read out the landmarks. Surely it doesn't matter, but that would be the better way to do it in the long run, I'd imagine. Does anyone actually call print landmarks, by the way? No, they don't. So that's probably why we don't bother to do anything sensible with that because nobody calls it. I'm inclined to delete that. If I ever want to actually delete all the landmarks, uh, sorry, if I want to, ever want to print all the landmarks at some point. Oh, it's going to be in the Examine isn't isn't it? Examine data DB. This is all going to be if zeroed out, isn't it? Well, maybe not. Are we in the right file here? Yes, I think we are in zero dot C. So here's if a, if a of e, would this call print landmarks? No, it wouldn't. This just um, goes through it manually. Right, it prints out the asset. Kind of cute how it dereferences it all rather than just using the stuff directly. 
like dereferencing this whole lemma log. Um, yeah, we don't care about that. Um, sync db. So yeah, we're now synchronizing. I think the next thing would be, as I said earlier, rather than skipping the project and its children, is to actually do the descent into children inside this loop somehow, or inside some sort of a loop. Probably a function that calls itself actually, in a similar manner to how skip product and children calls itself, doesn't it? Yeah, in a similar manner to this. I'd probably like a bit more of like, I suppose, activity really, like a more active function that does the, a more active recursive function. And I suppose this is kind of that, this insert product of db top level. Uh, because he calls this db recursively, which itself calls itself. yeah one thing to say is that the skip project in children is operating on the database If we manage to locate the top level guy, we just skip that project in the database. And that's the end of it. We don't bother to descend into this this project. We don't descend into the configured projects, children. Yeah, this guy can recurse into the children. Uh, yeah, I mean, it probably is fine for this to be a thing that happens. Although, We need to know while it's happening, 
don't we, I think. Like, if you insert something into the DB, you need to know that anybody with the current generation You need to know that any landmarks in the current generation from the current entry count, <laughs> like the current uh, number of entries in thingy, entries in generation. you need to know to sort of offset those generations those are indices in the, land, in the landmarks Yeah, I'm kind of inclined here to say if we haven't inclined, if we haven't uh, located the project, then insert it and skip it, and then on you go. Otherwise, if you have located it, then you need to descend into the project somehow. doing this procedure essentially oh yeah I guess you see the skip project doesn't add an entry to the generation but I wonder if this should be the person who's responsible for doing the actual for doing the deed do you know what I mean
guess one downside is that there's a few more functions that call skip project, but not many. But I think that should produce the same output, shouldn't it? Ah, it doesn't. Oh, because we found it. Is that true? Oh, hold on a minute. Sync DB. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, if we've located, then we, sorry, if we haven't located, then we insert it into the DB. We skip this newly stored project by child, basically, essentially. Uh, sorry, we skip project and its children. If, however, we have located it, then what we want to do is we actually want to do the recursion ourselves and say, like, I think we're going to need to go to if we do it in, in line. Located. Yeah, I guess if we haven't located, so it's possible this, but if we have got into here, if we have got into here, then surely we'll have set this, right? And I mean, now that I think about it, well, I guess located could be in a number of different cases, maybe.
yeah, again, it's like, it's this whole situation again, isn't it? Like, located, we're going to have to reset to false. What is located equals true business? Super horrible, this boss. You can kind of see how this is already getting really recursive. <laughs> right, we're doing this here, and then we're doing this dude all over again. Project 
sorry, Stars Project, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just all super horrible. <laughs> How long have we got left? 10 minutes. Now that I think about it, this thing here Yeah, we need to increment the accumulator somehow Nobody's doing this. Good pair of children. Project Index Accumulator. We're talking about. We're not talking about that anymore, are we? Maybe we kind of are. I don't know. So yeah, I don't think for a moment that this is correct. Let's just see what happens. So we get two, three, two this time. We're almost there, but. We're missing some of the people from generation two or generation one. Yeah, and I mean this all by a complete garbage anyway. But yeah, I'm going to remove this for now, go back to what we were at before, should have 252 shouldn't we, uh, I've now got a third generation popping in. Two five five two, it's saying.
Oh, I'll tell you what, actually. Is it because we've added some stuff? Probably is, actually, isn't it? There's Hero up there. Yeah. There's no code within it. So this is just garbage. So maybe actually that whole lot was alright. Yeah, maybe this is all okay. So if we have a location, then we do this. Yeah, two five two, perfect. So we've got hero code somewhere over there. Here okay, right. Yeah, this is more like it. Um, so then if we just let that continue. It should go on and stuff the stuff in. Yeah, there is error code. Yeah, looks looks fine to me still. So I suppose yeah, the next things next thing to do is to try and do what I was sort of starting to do here, which is essentially move for, move away from basically. We just need to figure out how to structure this. Uh, recursive function basically so you call this thing uh, and it can in turn call itself on all the project product children that it needs to call it on inserting projects um, well I guess just like locating projects and inserting them I guess Yeah, I reckon that's the next step. That's it. So, so also finish their set. So I'm gonna call it there. Done an hour and a half. We did a, a little bit of stuff. 
which is what we really wanted to do, fix typo. And we um, did this. We also f uh, fixed the the um, clearing of that terminal line, essentially. Um, do we ever make a note of that? We don't need to because it's just done. No, I don't think we did. Not, not that I can see. Alright, yeah, so that's it. Calling it a day, and uh, we'll, we will resume tomorrow. Um, sussing out our recursive form to presenting it to all the child products. Enjoy the continue to create the game to the product generations. So, yep, thanks very much, Heroes and Heroines, for being here, for being beautiful and fantastic, and most of all, for being dedicated. Until next time, farewell for now.